Shocking details of attempted honor killing in Australia revealed in court. A recent court hearing in the Adelaide Magistrates Court exposed how far some families are willing to go to maintain control of their daughters. On November 30th, 2021, a 21-year-old Muslim woman was stabbed multiple times and kidnapped from a parking lot of Sefton Plaza Shopping Center in Sefton Park, Australia. The five perpetrators have been identified as members of the victim's families. A family. The attack left the victim with a perforated kidney, lacerated liver, and significant internal bleeding. While the victim was in the intensive care unit for her injuries, her bank account was drained, leaving only 17 cents. Her boyfriend's house was also broken into two days before the attack. Five members of the victim's family have been charged with attempted murder. The victim's father was charged with illegal detention after driving the victim back to their Blair Athel residence without calling the ambulance. According to the prosecutors, the attack appears to be an attempted honor killing. It was stated that the victim's family disapproved of her Christian boyfriend. To protect the victim from probable future attacks, bail has been refused for all suspects. Good. Jesus Christ. How do they think they're going to get away with this? This is like Australia. This is not Pakistan. Well, what's interesting is that, so part of the reason reportedly from what the news, local news is telling me is that um, when this woman was like five or six years old, she was promised in marriage to one of her cousins back in Pakistan. She was... Okay had an arranged marriage she was engaged mm -hmm. like when she was a child to her cousin and so she grew up and then she had a boyfriend who was um a sri lankan christian who she met in university and they wanted to be together and their family didn't allow this they put tracking apps on her phone so they could locate her and then when she was at this shopping mall they stabbed her and tried to kidnap her and it was only because um someone somehow saw this someone contacted the woman's boyfriend and so the boyfriend contacted the police and so then the police sent an ambulance to her family's home because i guess they just like made that like deductive reasoning or they made the assumption that they're going to end up at their actual residence so the police went there with an ambulance to the residence to make sure that she was going to receive medical care as soon as possible so their charges are also um partially so high because they never called an ambulance for her let alone like the kidnapping but how did they think they could get away with this like this is like I mean, if, like, obviously this is going to happen. This is Australia. Like, I don't know. I mean, what's going to happen to them? I hope, like, are they, I hope they stay in jail forever. Like, is that what's going to happen? Well, they have the next court hearing is in March. And in the meantime, or I don't know um, how long it will last, but the victim, she is in um, protective custody. So that's really good news. The, the authorities is taking this so seriously. Um, I found out about this story because um, the founder of Faith of Sajabi, Zara Kay, was posting about it. And I wanted to highlight this story because I think it's important to remember that honor-based violence isn't something that just happens like somewhere far away, especially if you live in like the West. It's something that can just be seen as, oh, that just happens over there. Like that's not something that we have to deal with. That's not something that affects my community, but it actually does affect our communities. And this can happen in your backyard and it's shocking. And so it's important that, you know, we don't, um, hold these issues of honor-based violence like at arm's length and just saying oh that happens to those people those other people blah 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 like but to really see it as something that can happen anywhere and to provide uh, have resources available readily for women in no matter what community you are because this can come in into your into your backyard so to speak it, it can yeah yeah i mean even if it doesn't happen in your backyard uh, if it, it, it is it's important to i mean like 
I mean, it's not like the poems that are happening in Pakistan are less important, right? We're not suggesting, obviously we're not saying, but like this shows like if this, if this happens in Australia, like somewhere that the, like the rule of law actually matters a lot more and the officials are a lot more serious about like stopping stuff like this. But the fact that happens in Australia with much less Muslim population, imagine what the, what, what girls are dealing with in Pakistan, right? Like imagine the hell. Uh, and that they're living in in Pakistan or in Bangladesh, like God damn it! Oh my gosh, if you've seen the statistics about domestic violence that's been happening um, during the disease that's been going around in Pakistan, like it's a huge issue. It's a huge issue. Um, I mean, that's not necessarily honor-based violence, um, but uh, there's been a couple of very high-profile cases that have happened recently of um, like. Of honor killings that um shocked you like even the elite class in pakistan with how bad and brutal it can get um do you want to talk about like why you believe or maintain that this is something that is religiously based because you do get a lot of pushback for that often okay yeah i mean um i have done it so many times but i think like for some of people here here it might get repetitive so i'll just go through it really quickly okay uh there is nothing in islamic scripture that specifically allows honor killing okay and uh, in fact technically based on islamic rules um this is this is not allowed this is haram right um you shouldn't be able to do this however i still blame islam for this for multiple reasons um one of you know so uh, the example is that just just like in christianity where it doesn't allow you to uh, molest children um there's nothing in the bible that allows that but we still do blame christianity for being responsible for that to happen because of indirectly make it as um, responsible for that to happen for example in christianity uh, it gives you the idea of all fit, all sins are forgivable through just believing in jesus christ so it gives you basically a license to sin um, and also through the idea of religion as a whole gives god men uh, the authority and the legitimacy and the trust um that a lot of, you know th that puts them in a position where a lot of parents see these as moral people and in a more sec in a secular world we when we trust people with children they go through a lot of other loop a lot of uh, hoops that they're supposed to pass for us to be able to give them the, tr the trust that they deserve with children that that doesn't happen in religious um uh, circles because of that level that trust that priests or imams are supposed to be moral people or trustworthy people and that and basically it creates environments where people who shouldn't be trusted with children are trusted with children so indirectly like christianity is responsible for that even though there's nothing in scripture similarly in the in islam also we have honor killing which there is no scripture that allows that but there are multiple things that makes that possible first the idea of um women being um less uh valuable and therefore like the punishments associated with um being abusive to women is um less harsh so for example a lot of fathers even in iran calculate like for example in, in iran honor killing your own daughter is illegal and you go to jail for it but killing your daughter is the punishment for it is much less than killing your son so a lot of fathers make that you know make the calculation that the fact that going to jail for being able to cleanse their family off of this shame um it's an it's an it's a because the prison sentence is not that long for killing your daughter it's worth doing it anyways right so there's like that attitude also the idea of just honor culture shame culture um the idea of women bringing shame to a family and being being impure for having relationships like this, that's something that Islam introduces. Is, is, and so that's part of the, that's part of scripture. That's part of Islam. So it introduces that the idea of physically being able to punish women, the idea of physically being able to own women, trade women, um, even if it's not a slave woman, which is allowed in Islam, the idea of women being a property of the father that gets um, switched to a uh, property of the husband, that, that way of looking at women as if like their consent doesn't even matter. The way women are seen uh, and treated in Islam encourages this idea of them being impure, brings shame and it's disgusting, and that you have a physical authority over women. So these ideas encourage in Islam uh, creates a culture that eventually leads to honor killing even though islam directly itself doesn't um 
doesn't endorse it condemns it actually condemns honor killing and does not endorse it but still islam is responsible for honor killing and that's why you see uh, honor killing happening in islamic communities uh, per, uh, on a per capita basis much much higher than any other community okay so okay. i concur oh and AGA is saying the work I've done with Faith is Sajabi has shown me this happens way more than you think in Western countries. Yes. Fun fact, guys, our very own AGA recently became the vice president of Faithless Sajabi. So congratulations to AGA and big shouts out to Faithless Sajabi. Like I was saying, it is important to have resources available to women who could be experiencing this kind of violence. And Faithless Hijabi is one of the best organizations that I know that does do a lot to provide um, help to women who are facing these kinds of things. So AGA also provided links to Faithless Hijabi. Um, so go check them out. I just want to highlight the fact that um, the way, the reason why they're saying, we're saying, like some people are suggesting, like reminding you that this happens in Western countries more, more often than people um realize and that it should be taken more seriously it's not because like i don't want people to come with the impression that we're thinking these events happening in western countries are more important than the ones that are happening in iran or in saudi arabia or in pakistan or bangladesh okay the reason why these these, these events are just more accessible to us for us to stop you know what I mean? Like there is a legal framework for us to be able to do something about it, right? So it's not like, oh, like, oh yeah, honor killing happening in Pakistan. Oh, I guess. Oh, but it's happening in Australia. Australia. Oh my God. We should like that is that is far worse. Like these are these are people's lives, right? So people's lives in Pakistan are as valuable as people's lives in Australia. The reason why we want to say, like, oh my God, it happened, it's happening in Australia a lot more than you realize is because at least there is something that you could there's you have the force of the government behind you so you as an individual putting some effort into attacking this there is a lot more resources available to you for you to stop it okay so that's again i i don't want but i also don't want to encourage the idea that okay so we there's nothing we can do about the pakistani ones because there is okay there is something we could do about it as well i just want to make sure that we are not nobody comes with the impression that we care about um, crimes that are happening in United States, United Kingdom, Australia, um, more than or anywhere in Europe. We, it's not that we care about them more than the ones that are happening in Pakistan. Okay. Yeah, no, I completely um, agree. I, 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 I personally want to highlight when it happens in these Western or free societies, more, um, particularly because I think for other people in my community in these countries, um, it it brings their attention to it in, in a bigger way. Like I said, they kind of, if it happens in Pakistan, we don't believe that it, it should, it's any less important, but people are going to be more likely to dismiss it. Like, Oh, that's just what happens over there. But to, to bring it into your country and personalize it more, I think it's, um, it can sometimes get more attention and I want attention generally more on these types of, um, this type of violence. Does okay, Prometheus sense? is yes, yeah. Prometheus is saying it happens in all religions in India, not just Muslims. Well, Prometheus, good thing we didn't say that it, that it happens only in Islamic country. So it's a good thing we didn't say that. You know, I'm actually like maybe Hercules shouldn't have saved you. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Kali, you know like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.